My name is Evan, and today in this video I'd like to go over some basic information on how to operate your BoxLite ProColor 3 interactive flat panel display. First, let's learn how to turn it on. The power button is right down here under the bottom bezel. If you run your fingers along the bottom of your display, you'll eventually feel the power cable right about here. Once you find the power cable, located just to the side of it, there will be a little flip switch that you can press. That will turn the display on, and then you can press the round button here, right in the front. That's a sleep-wake button. Pressing that will start the display for the very first time. Once your panel finishes starting up, you can use this round sleep-wake button here to turn off the screen anytime you need. In order to get the screen back on, you can press the button again, or simply tap anywhere on the panel to wake it up. The next thing I'd like to talk about is how to change inputs on your flat panel display. You might be interested in connecting your teacher laptop, for instance, or you might want to use the PC module that is optionally built into these panels as well. In order to switch inputs, the best place to look is this input button right here. So if we tap that, you'll see here a range of options from HDMI inputs on the side of your panel, or also the PC there. That's the PC module built into the panel. To connect your teacher laptop, you will use the HDMI cord and a USB touch cable, and those would go through the side of your panel. To go into a little more detail here about the different configuration options for your panel, there are two main ways that your panel might be set up. The first here is the default Android software that's running on your BoxLite panel. You'll know you're running Android if you see this home screen with the grid of icons there and the BoxLite logo. And that comes with every panel. Some panels also might have an optional PC module installed. This is a self-contained Windows PC that's actually inserted into the side of your panel. So if you can change the input and you see this icon, you'll also have the option of running a full Windows PC on your screen here. That way you can run any Windows applications that you might need without the need to connect your own laptop or another computer. Everything will be running right here on the panel. The other option that's available to you, of course, is connecting your own laptop. To do that, you'll want to connect the HDMI and touch cables to the side of your panel and run those to your computer. And then you'll be able to share the screen using the HDMI input setting here on the panel. Keep in mind that all of these options are available to you. Simply selecting the input menu will allow you to choose the PC, the Android, or the HDMI inputs. And if you don't have the PC module installed, you can of course still access Windows applications using your teacher laptop. Let's talk more about switching these inputs and the different options that you have with the ProColor display. You have running here the built-in Android software. It's very touch-friendly. It contains some helpful applications that are really useful for teaching. And it also allows you to do things like annotate the display, freeze the content, take screenshots and things using this sidebar. But that's not the only option with the ProColor. You can connect your teacher laptop, as I said before, with the HDMI input. And if you use the touch cable as well, what you see on your laptop screen will be reflected here, and you can also control your computer with the touch screen right from the front of the room. The other option, if you have it built in, is the PC module. The PC module is simply a Windows PC that's built right into your display. So instead of needing to connect your teacher laptop, you may be able to just use this to access all of the Windows applications or other things like document cameras and webcams that you might need. There are a lot of connectivity options on ProColor 3, so I've taken some photos and blown them up here on the screen so it's a little easier to see what all of your options are. Here on the front corner, you'll find two USB ports. Those are easily accessible to use something like a USB drive. There's also an infrared remote. You can use that with the included remote control with your panel if you're changing the screen brightness or volume. You want to aim it somewhere in this vicinity by the infrared port. Just around the side and back, right about here, you'll also find some more options. The HDMI out port 
That will take whatever is displayed on this screen out of the display to whatever else you're using, whether that's a camera to record the screen or another audio or visual capture device. You can also use these three USB ports on the back for fast data transfer in and out of the storage on this display. And these HDMI in ports are what you're going to use to connect something like a teacher laptop. You would plug your HDMI cable into one of these ports, as well as one of the touch cables. The touch cable ports are USB, they also connect to your laptop. That will allow you to control your laptop with the touch screen option here. If your panel has the PC module installed, you will also see a larger array of ports that are associated with the PC module. You can tell that it's the PC module and not the Android side of the panel because it has these silver handles here and that little orange button. If the ports are between those handles, they're part of the PC module. Here we have more connectivity options for displays, HDMI and DisplayPort if you need to attach other monitors to your PC. There's also USB ports here, as well as VGA and Ethernet if you need those. Up on top here we have audio in and out, as well as a lock in case you want to secure your PC and make sure that it doesn't walk away. In today's world, you're probably a little concerned about keeping everything clean and making sure your students are safe. There's also a few recommendations for keeping this screen clean. You can use a microfiber cloth or another kind of a soft cloth to wipe down the display. If you use any cleaner or water, make sure you spray that on the cloth and then wipe on the glass. Do not spray directly on the display. There are also a few strategies you can use to make sure that things stay clean in the classroom. Instead of touching the screen with your fingers, for instance, you can use the included stylus. This will make it easier to write and manipulate content as well. And when passing this between students, you can make sure everyone hand sanitizes or washes their hands, or you can have students bring their own stylus instead of using their hands. An unsharpened pencil or even the eraser end will actually work just fine to operate the touch screen. So it's completely possible to have students bring up their own pencil and use that to manipulate the screen. Another option would be rubber gloves. If students and teachers wear gloves, they can still operate the touch screen display and then obviously switch gloves and dispose of them safely. All right, that information should help you get started with your ProColor 3. And if you need more help using various applications or more advanced software features, please check out some of the other videos in this series.